Hello, and welcome to the This Happened Today in History podcast. I am your host, Mr. Miller. This podcast will cover a number of topics that happened on this date in history. Please visit the podcast webpage at thishappentoday.buzzsprout.com. There you can download the notes page, which will help you organize the information, as well as develop your own ideas on how these events change the world around us. If you're interested in hearing more, please consider subscribing so you will not miss out on what happens tomorrow in history. Today is July 17th. The House of Windsor came into being on this date in 1917 when the name was adopted as the British Royal Family's official name by a proclamation of King George V, replacing the historic name of Saxe Coburg Gotha. It remains the family name of the current royal family. The present queen has familial ties with most of the monarchs in Europe. During the 20th century, kings and queens of the United Kingdom have fulfilled the very duties of a constitutional monarchy. One of their most important roles has been acting as national figureheads lifting public morale during the devastating wars of 1914-18 and 1939-45. The period saw the modernization of the monarchy in tandem with many social changes which have taken place over the past 90 years. One such modernization has been the use of mass communication technologies to make the royal family accessible to a broader public all over the world. George V adopted the new medium of radio to broadcast across the empire at Christmas. The coronation ceremony was broadcast on television for the first time in 1953 at the Queen's insistence, and the World Wide Web has been used for the past seven years to provide a global audience with information about the royal family. During this period, British monarchs have also played a vital part in promoting international relations. The Queen retains close links with former colonies in her role as head of the Commonwealth. And on this date in 1941, the New York Yankees center fielder Joe DiMaggio failed to get a hit against the Cleveland Guardians, then known as the Cleveland Indians, which brings his historic 56-game hitting streak to an end, the record one which had captivated the country for two months. Joseph Paul DiMaggio was born November 25, 1914 in Martinez, California. In 1891, his father, Giuseppe, had emigrated from Sicily to the Bay Area, which he, where he made his living as a fisherman. He was later made legendary by Ernest Hemingway's 1952 novel, The Old Man in the Sea. The DiMaggio family moved to San Francisco's Italian-dominated North Beach neighborhood the year Joe was born. Joe was the eighth of nine children, the fourth of five boys, two of whom, his older brother Vince and younger brother Dominic, joined him in the major leagues. His two brothers had successful major league careers, but Jolton Joe, arguably the best player of his generation and one of the greatest of all time, was a phenomenon. In 1941, DiMaggio was in his sixth season as center fielder for the New York Yankees. He already helped lead the team to the American League pennant in the World Series wins alongside first baseman Lou Gehrig in 1936, 37, and 38. In 1939, Gehrig fell ill with amyotropic lateral sclerosis, later known as Lou Gehrig's disease, and DiMaggio picked up the slack. That year, he led the American League with a 381 batting average and helped the Yankees to their fourth championship in a row. They were the first major league team ever to have a four-peat. In 1940, DiMaggio led the American League in hitting again at 352, but the Yankees finished two games behind Hank Greenberg's Detroit Tigers. On May 15, 1941, DiMaggio began his record-breaking streak against the White Sox in Yankee Stadium with a single and an RBI. As the streak continued, fans across the nation took notice. DiMaggio broke George Sisters, Sisler's American record of 41 consecutive games with a hit on June 29th at Griffith Stadium in Washington, and four days later, on July 2nd, DiMaggio broke Wee Willie Keeler's major league record of 44 games. As the nation followed DiMaggio's progress and he continued to hit in game after game, the Les Brown Orchestra scored a hit with the popular tune, Jolton Joe DiMaggio. Finally, on July 17th in Cleveland, in a night game in front of 67,468 fans, DiMaggio went hitless against the Cleveland pitchers Al Smith and Jim Bagby Jr. In his first three at-bats, DiMaggio grounded out to third twice against Smith, both on hard hit balls, and then walked. With Bagby pitching in the eighth inning, DiMaggio hit into a double play, ending the Yankee rally in the greatest hitting streak in Major League history. DiMaggio confided to a teammate after the game that by failing to get a hit, he had also lost the 10,000 promised to him by Heinz Ketchup for matching the number 57 featured on their labels. DiMaggio won the 1941 American League MVP over Red Sox slugger Ted Williams in spite of the latter's 406 batting average that season. 
The last time that any major league player hit over 400, DiMaggio retired after the 1951 season after 13 seasons with the Yankees that included 10 pennants, 9 World Series wins. He was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1955. And finally, happy birthday to Disneyland, the only theme park designed and built under the direct supervision of Walt Disney. Opened on Ju Sunday, July 17, 1955. Construction lasted exactly one year and cost $17 million to complete. The opening was only intended for about 11,000 invited guests and press, though a total of 28,000 attended due to a rush of counterfeit tickets. The event was telecast by ABC, anchored by actors Art Linklater, Bob Cummings, and Ronald Reagan, who were all friends of Walt Disney. Although initially intended to be a preview event preceding the opening to the public the next day, Disneyland adopted July 17th as the official date of its opening and its birthday. On the first day, Disneyland offered five themed lands with a total of 20 attractions. At the start of the telecast, Walt Disney made his opening dedication speech. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past, and here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America with the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration all over the world. Unbeknownst to Walt Disney or television audience, the press event was rife with problems, in large part due to the unexpectedly large crowd and scorching outside temperatures of over 100 degrees. Drinking fountains were dry, restaurants ran out of food, rides were breaking down, and the gas leak in Fantasyland caused half the park to temporarily close. Company insiders were later referred to opening day as Black Sunday. Walt Disney worked hard to restore faith in the park, inviting press to return again once the problems have been sorted out. Disneyland had changed a great deal over the past six decades, but many of the attractions that were operating on opening day are still there today, albeit renovated or slightly tweaked. You have been listening to the This Happened Today in History podcast. I thank you for listening, and I hope that you have enjoyed learning about historical events from the past. Thank you to the following websites for their information regarding today's topics. ThePeopleHistory.com Royal Family Name Changed at Royal.UK Joe DiMaggio's Hitting Streak Ends at History.com and Disneyland at ABC7.com the music used as the background track for this podcast is Americana, created by Kevin McLeod on Incompetech.com. If you enjoyed this information and would like to hear more, please consider subscribing, as this will keep the historical events in your feed in the morning for each day. I hope you have a great day.